Encapsulating Security Payload ESP ESP can be used to provide confidentiality, data origin authentication, connectionless integrity, and anti-replay service, a form of partial sequence integrity, and traffic flow confidentiality. The set of services provided depends on options selected at the time of Security Association SA. Establishment and on the location of the implementation in a network topology. ESP can work with a variety of encryption and authentication algorithms, including authenticated encryption algorithms such as GCM. The top level format of an ESP packet is as shown in the figure. It contains the following fields, security parameters index, which is a 32-bit one. This identifies a security association. Sequence number, again a 32-bit one, a monotonically increasing counter value. This provides an anti-replay function as discussed for AH. Payload data. This is variable in size. This is a transport level segment when it is worked in transport mode or IP packet in tunnel mode that is protected by encryption. Padding. This can be 0 to 255 bytes. The purpose of this field is discussed later. Pad length of 8 bits indicates the number of pad bytes immediately preceding this field. Next header, this is 8 bits. It identifies the type of data contained in the payload data by identifying the first header in that payload. Integrity check value, this is another variable that contains the integrity check value computed over ESP packet minus the authentication data field. When any combined mode algorithm is employed, the algorithm itself is expected to return both decrypted plain text and a password field indication for integrity check. For combined mode algorithms, the ICV that would normally appear at the end of ESP packet may be omitted. Structure of payload data Two additional fields may be present in the payload as shown in the figure. That is an initialization value IV or nonce is present if this is required by the encryption or authenticated encryption algorithm used for ESP. If tunnel mode is being used, then IPsec implementation may add traffic flow confidentiality, padding after the payload data and before padding field. Encryption and authentication algorithms the payload data, padding, pad length, and next header fields are encrypted by the ESP service. If the algorithm used to encrypt payload requires cryptographic synchronization data, such as an initialization vector, then these data may be carried explicitly at the beginning of payload data field. If included, an initialization vector is usually not encrypted, although it is often referred to as being part of the ciphertext. The ICV field is optional. It is present only if the integrity service is selected and is provided by either a separate integrity algorithm or a combined mode algorithm that uses an ICV. The ICV is computed after the encryption is done, 
This order of processing facilities rapid detection and rejection of replayed or bogus packets by the receiver prior to decrypting the packet, hence potentially reducing the impact of denial of service attacks. It also allows for possibility of parallel processing of packets at the receiver, that is, decryption can take place in parallel with integrity checking. Also note that because the ICV is not protected by encryption, a keyed integrity algorithm must be employed to compute the ICV. The padding field serves several purposes. If an algorithm requires the plain text to be a multiple of some number of bytes, for example, the multiple of a single block for a block cipher, the padding field is used to expand the plain text, which consists of the payload data, padding, pad length, and next header fields to the required length. The ESP format requires that the pad length and the next header fields to be right aligned with a 32-bit word. Equivalently, the ciphertext must be an integer which is multiple of 32 bits. The padding field is used to assure this alignment. Additional padding may be added to provide partial traffic flow confidentiality by concealing the actual length of the payload. The anti-replay service. A replay attack is one in which an attacker obtains a copy of an authenticated packet and later transmits it into the intended destination. The receipt of duplicate authenticated IP packets may disrupt the service in some way or may have some other undesired consequences. The sequence number field is designed to throttle such an attack. First, we shall discuss the sequence number generated by the sender and then we will look at how it is processed by the recipient. When a new essay is established, the sender initializes a sequence number counter to zero. Each time the packet is sent on this essay, the sender increments the counter and places the value in the sequence number field. Thus, the first value to be 1. If the anti-replay is enabled, the sender must not allow the sequence number to the cycle past 2 per 32 minus 1 back to 0. Otherwise, there would be multiple valid packets with the same sequence number. If the limit of 2 per 32 minus 1 is reached, the sender should terminate this SA and negotiate a new SA with a new key. Because the IP is a connectionless, unreliable service, the protocol does not guarantee the packets will be delivered in the order and does not guarantee that all the packets will be delivered. Therefore, the IPsec authentication document dictates the receiver should implement a window of size W with the default value of W is equal to 64. The right edge of the window represents the highest sequence number, N. So far, so far, received for a valid packet. For any packet with a sequence number in the range from N minus W plus 1 to that has been correctly received, which is properly authenticated. The corresponding slot in the window is marked. Anti-replay mechanism is as visualized in the figure. Inbound processing proceeds to as follows when a packet is received. 
if the received packet falls within the window and is new, the MAC is checked. If the packet is authenticated, the corresponding slot in the window is marked. If the received packet is to the right of the window and is new, the MAC is checked. If the packet is authenticated, the window is advanced so that this sequence number is the right edge of the window and the corresponding slot in the window is marked. If the received packet is to the left of the window or if authentication fails, then the packet is discarded. This is an auditable event. The transport and tunnel modes. The figure shown here and in the next slide shows the two ways in which the IPsec ESP service can be used. In the figure shown here, encryption and optionally authentication is provided directly between two hosts. This figure shows how tunnel mode operation can be used to set up a virtual private network. In this example, an organization has four private networks interconnected across the internet. Hosts on the internal networks use the internet for transport of data but do not interact with other internet-based hosts. By terminating the tunnels at the security gateway to each internal network, the configuration allows the hosts to avoid implementing the security capability. The former technique is supported by a transport mode SA, while the latter technique uses a tunnel mode SA.